2020 was very difficult for most, but you just strolled through it without, a, without hardly a scratch on you. Gives you a chance how you're going to stroll through 2021, and are you bullish about the 12 months ahead? Uh, there's plenty of scratches despite <laughs> Amazon, but um, I'm, I'm bullish for next year. I, I think you're going to see quite strong earnings per share growth right across the market, which has been something that's been missing for years in Australia now. And you know, I think you're going to see a surge in consumer confidence. There's still a lot of stimulus to flow through. Um, and you know, I think there's a lot of cash that's still looking for a home. So I, I think we'll hit an all-time high next year at some stage. Give us a percentage. Nine. Nine percent up? That's a good start, better than cash. <laughs> okay, consensus. Consensus yep. is always a nasty thing. We, we all get in the same boat, and then there's a hole in the bottom yep. that sinks. What's the consensus trade that might bring a few people undone this year? It's got to be around interest rates, because I think that was the view that formed through 2020, where rates are going to be at or near zero forever. And everything was starting to get priced off that revenue multiples, pre-revenue multiples. And um, although it will be the case for some time, you know, I think the economy has held up a lot better than I thought it would. Um, with, as I said, we're going to see stimulus flow aggressively well into 2021. The vaccination will start to get rolled out. And so there might be a re-evaluation of where rates are headed and if they're going to start to move a bit quicker. And it's something that you want to keep re-evaluating because we know the impact it could have on, on asset prices if it's unexpected. So quicker on the upside? Yeah, potentially. Yields going up. Okay. I know you had a really good year, but there must have been a stock that you got wrong. Uh, made you stay awake at night, gave you a bit of a headache. You sit there and learn a few lessons. What's that stock? There were plenty of headaches particularly in the first half of 2020. <laughs> One of the more unusual ones was Auckland Airport, um, mainly because it's not a company that will typically give you headaches. Um, but of course, when COVID hit through February and March, it's rapidly dawning on you what the implications were for travel, how New Zealand was dealing with COVID, which was quite different to everywhere else in the world. And, um, you know, it threw up questions which you really, was hard to know the answer to. supposed to be to. bulletproof, wasn't it? It was supposed to be bulletproof. I think to some extent it has shown some signs of that. Um, you know, in, in terms of what lessons I learned from it, one, one of the things I certainly came to appreciate again is that good quality assets and good quality companies can access capital very easily and, and quickly if they need to. And in hindsight, you know, they went hard on a raising and that was really the start of the return of confidence in AIA. Sydney left it for a bit later and that price has lagged a bit more. So, and, and the other thing I think was, you know, when you get hit from left to field events, big drawdowns, prices get very irrational. Markets aren't always rational and you want to be able to take advantage of those times. That's one of the comeback kids. Yeah. Okay. We got a chance early in the year, but let's, let's go back a bit and yeah. think, well, when prices get absolutely smoked, they're down on their knees, is there a stock that you look back and you think, if that was that price again, I would just load up and that would be the cornerstone of my portfolio? What's that stock? That you asked me this question a year ago and I said IDP, and I was, when I was thinking about the answer to today, I, I didn't buy it, which was, I'm still <laughs> kicking myself about. Um, but this time around, it'd be Hub24. Just because you know, I work in the wealth industry, I can see the structural changes happening in front of my eyes, and I think it's actually happening a lot faster than everyone thought it was going to. And I just think net wealth and Hub, I think, are going to be two, you know, they're going to be two dominant players in this industry for many years to come. And, you know, they're going to have strong revenue growth for many years, but they're about to hit this, the operating leverage part of the cycle, which it's is scale the, game. It's the sweet spot when you want to own those companies. Um, I should have stepped in and done something about it. Um, and now they're quite pricey again. But it, so $20, you know, what's the right price? They're trading on about 50 times next year's earnings. Um, I reckon if you could pay a multiple of 35 to 40, which is still up there, but given the growth outlook, I think it's warranted, you know, $15, $16, be a good price. Okay, here we go. 12 months ago, we sat in the chairs. Now you're the reigning champ. And we all thought, what a joke. He's just picked the biggest company in the world. <laughs> well, the joke was on us. <laughs> now you're the champ after being the bridesmaid for two years. Yes. You picked Amazon. Yep. And wow, you beat everyone. Yep. Well done, congratulations. Thank you. Now you get another chance, go back to back. What's your stock for 2021? Yeah, I've, I've been mulling this over. I, it's Tyro Payments for me. Um, th this is a business, I think, has got a really good long-term structural growth story. But I think 2021, you know, as we see the economy reopen, relaxation start to come back in, because of the number of hospitality merchants that it services, we, we should see some pretty strong growth. So, you know, there's four catalysts I like about this business next year. 
Firstly, um, the volumes of transactions through the network are going to are going to really start to accelerate. Between December 1 and December 11, they did 29% volume growth versus the PCP. So it's already starting to come through. Uh, secondly, I think there's, you're going to see further market share gains um, and potentially the entry into some new verticals. Third, um, there's going to be the launch of Tyro Connect, which is this integration hub they built around point of sale, which I think is going to create more customer loyalty and, and uptake. And you know, I, I think the lending part of the business, which was frozen during COVID for good reasons, will start to go again. It's quite a profitable part of the business for them. So hopefully, Tyro does it for me this year. Well, given your form, you better get everyone the code. Tyro, what's the code? T-Y-R.